Our first prepared speaker this evening brings us an interesting storm tale. Daniel is a member of Evening Toastmasters Club. This will be a five to seven minute speech. Please help me welcome to deliver a storm to be remembered, Jan Daniel Jadick. The biting wind blows ferociously down Pacific Avenue. The moon makes the snowflakes appear to be as large as Volkswagens as they tumble and crash into the ground all around me. This was an unusual storm because in Santa Cruz, California, it usually doesn't snow until August or September. <laughs> but I'll tell you, this storm was as real as the nose on my face and as welcome as a hooker at a funeral. <laughs> as I made my way towards my vehicle, I kept my eye on the ground in front of me to avoid ice slicks and deep slush puddles. As I approached a lighted corner, I saw something on the ground, a crumbled up piece of paper. To this day, I don't know why I was compelled to swoop down and grab that piece of paper and stuff it into my right coat pocket. Arriving at my car, I saw that my lock was frozen. I had to use my bit lighter to heat my key so that I could insert it one millimeter at a time in order to be able to open that car door. Once inside my car, I started the motor and turned on the solar-powered radio. Yes, one of the perks of living in Santa Cruz, California is our wonderful, marvelous solar-powered radio system. I don't know how it works at night, but it does. <laughs> As the car is warming inside, my attention is brought to that crumbled up green colored piece of paper in my right coat pocket. I reach in with my glove hand and pull it out. Turning on the dome light and unraveling it, I see to my amazement that it's in fact a $100 bill. Doubting my own good luck, I turned it over. And there, I saw something that changed my life. In red ink, in what appeared to be a woman's handwriting, were the words 49 Cosmo Place dash in caps H E L P exclamation point. I shivered again when I saw that. Was this the work of some unfeeling, uncouth individual who would be willing to spend a hundred dollars to have me show up at his house so he could laugh at me? Or, in fact, was this a person in distress who was willing to pay me in advance for my assistance? Should I go to 49 Cosmo Place? Nah, I'll just keep the hundred dollars. <laughs> I pulled out into the street and headed the vehicle towards the highway to go home. Five minutes later, I found myself parked on a side street between two big snowbanks. My attention again went to that crumbled up green piece of $100 bill. I took out my Garmin and I entered 49 Cosmo Place into my amazement. There is such a place. Looking at the map, I realized that 49 Cosmo Place was one of those streets where you can only go in and out of it with one, one way. I had the impression that if you had no reason to be at 49 Cosmo Place, you'd probably never know it existed. Nah, forget it. Started driving towards the highway again, resolute to just forget it. 20 minutes later, I was slowly inching my car along the curb on Cosmo Place, looking for 49. I saw a building with that number on it, and it was a very odd building because of two things. Number one, there were no windows visible from the street. And number two, it was painted entirely in black. I inched the car forward and forward till I could see what appeared to be the front door. The front door itself was massive. It appeared to be made out of both concrete and steel. 
as I, got, as I drove even closer, I could see lettering on the door with some of the letters missing, kind of like the well-worn smile of a prize fighter. <laughs> the letters were D-S-C-P-H-Y, that I was befuddled. My curiosity then grabbed me by the back of my neck and forced me to open that car door and I threw myself out of the car and fell into the deepest, coldest slush puddle ever. Now I am limping with cold, numbed legs and feet across the street to get closer to this door so that I maybe would hear something. Near the doorknob, in very small lettering, it said, open, come in. Well, that was my invitation. I must have assumed that the door was a lot heavier Rather, I, must, I assumed that the door was a lot heavier than it was because it was made out of steel and concrete. I pushed all of my weight against the door, but I was surprised because it didn't take that much effort and I stumbled in with my legs numb. It was difficult to get my balance, but I did. As I entered that building, I saw something that amazed me. It was a fairly well-lit building, and inside there were rows and rows and rows of wooden tables about that high, and on those tables were stacked record albums, vintage record albums. And within that building, I could see 12 or 14 people silently flipping through record albums, searching for that evening's treasure. On my right, I could see a podium, and on it stood a man, a bearded man, who apparently was the clerk. And when I met, he nodded a welcome, and I nodded a thank you. And then to my left, I saw this young woman walking somewhat carefully but briskly towards the counter with a singular record album under her arm. I recognized that album. It was the Beatles' Help album from 1965. <laughs> she approached the counter carefully and so carefully placed that record album on the counter as if it were the finest piece of china. She then reached into her pocket and when her hand came out empty, she shrieked, where's my money? And she started to cry. I walked over to her because I realized what had happened now. I walked over to her and said, I think this is yours. She looked at me in amazement and her tears turned to laughter and giggling. How did you find that? How did this happen? That's amazing. That is mine. I said, well, this was meant to be. She bought the record, paid for it, and then turned to me and gave me the warmest, most wonderful hug ever. And as she backed away, she looked at me again and said, would you like to come to my apartment and listen to this wonderful music? I said, certainly, why not? That was 30 years ago, and we are still married today. <laughs>